Jesus. Will you lift your hand to heaven and one more time thank him for the privilege that we have to be gathered before him this morning as stewards. Will you appreciate him and give him the glory? What a privilege, what a blessing to be a steward in the house of the Lord. Appreciate him and give him the glory, the glory that is due unto his name. Jesus, we have come to say thank you. We have come to glorify you. And now let's begin to ask him for an encounter. This morning I've come for an encounter with you. Lord, send your light my way. Send your word my way. The word that will empower me for greater effectiveness in my stewardship. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord Jesus, we have come before you this morning full of gratitude and appreciation for the opportunity you have granted us to be in your presence. Lord, this morning our eyes are fixed on you. We are asking that you will send us your word. By your word today, let every one of our lives be transformed. We thank you because we know you have done it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And somebody believes, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated in his presence. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations, amen and amen. This morning is my privilege to bring us this first word in this Leadership Empowerment Summit. And it is captioned benefits of spiritual membership of this church. Benefits of spiritual membership of this church. It's important for us to recognize that nothing answers for us beyond the depth of our understanding. The res result of anything in the kingdom is the product of the depth of our understanding. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 23, the Bible says that these are those that receive the word on good ground. It said, it is the person that hears the word and understandeth it. As a result of that, it begins to bring forth fruit. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, the scripture tells us there, it says that we are to pray that we have access to the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So it's not enough to know a thing. It is vital to understand it. Nothing becomes outstanding without understanding. And that's why it's important for us to begin to have access to the light behind the benefits that accrue to us when it comes to our spiritual membership of this church. It also helps us to become effective in unveiling the same to our converts so that they can take full advantage of the blessings that are available here. Let's be reminded from scriptures that whatever is spiritually available in any spiritual house is obtainable to every spiritual member, not just worshipers. In Psalm chapter 65 and verse 4, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that you choose and cause to approach unto you. He said that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. So every spiritual house as it were, is a storehouse for God's blessings made available to those who are spiritual members, not just worshippers and not just passers-by. This church in specific has its own specific allocations of grace. For example, we have here exemplified walking faith, breakthroughs, healing, health, and wholeness, fruitfulness, financial fortune, signs and wonders. These are all allocations of grace that we see consistently manifested here. Every church has its allocation of grace. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1, the Bible talks about the grace that was upon the churches of Macedonia. And we are called in scriptures not just to be followers of persons, but followers of churches. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14. Just like every genuinely grafted branch to a tree will always bear fruit after the tree to which it is grafted, so also every spiritually connected believer or member of the church begins to bear fruit after the same order. In the book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 17, the Bible makes us to understand there it says that if some of the branches were broken off, and thou, being a wild olive, be grafted in among them, he said, and with them you now become a partaker of the root and the fatness of the olive. Whatever is flowing in the olive begins to flow through that grafted branch. That's what occurs when there is a genuine connection as a believer. Remember, according to scripture, like begets like. Giants, for example, will always beget giants because the DNA of gianthood is within them. You don't see a baby elephant needing to have prayer points to be big. What makes big is inside its DNA. The day it arrives on the earth, it's already like the size of a cow. And that is only the beginning, that is not the end. What made it big is not its effort, it's not its struggle, but its connection. In the same vein, what flows within our lives is a product of our spiritual connectivity. That means it's not enough to be present. Being present and not being connected will not allow, will not bring about any change of level. Our experience is determined by our connection. Those who are genuinely connected end up being supernaturally, you know, distinguished. My prayer is that for each one of us, the grace to sustain our connectivity will come in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe it, say a loud amen. I said you believe it, say a loud amen. Not only do we see this about our connectivity as it were to the church, but we also discover from scriptures that every God-ordained priesthood also carries specific graces on their lives. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7, he said, you are all partakers of my grace. So, the church has specific allocations of grace. And the priesthood under which we find ourselves also has specific allocations of grace. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 41, the Bible tells us there, he says, He that received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Connectivity determines results. There are allocations of grace that are made available to various specific priesthoods like we see in our midst today. My prayer again is that all the grace that God has put upon his servant for each one of us, we shall begin to experience the flow of that grace in every department of our lives. If you believe it, say a loud amen. I said, if you believe it, say a loud amen. Quickly this morning, what are some of the benefits of spiritual membership of this church? We look at four of them this morning before we rise to pray. Number one is reflection of the source. Reflection of the source. Genuine spiritual connectivity brings about reflection of one's source. In the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 13, the Bible tells us there, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and of John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Christ. Their association with Christ began to bring a new reflection upon their lives. Originally, they were not bold. Originally, they were unlearned men. But simply by their connectivity to Jesus, there was a new reflection, a new radiation upon their lives. You see, genuine connection 
brings about genuine reflection. You don't struggle to reflect the source to which you are genuinely connected to. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16 as well as verse 20. We are told there it says, you shall know them by their fruits. Repeated again in verse 20. He said, wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. You will identify them when you see what is coming out of their lives. They will reflect where they are coming from. That is what happens when you find an individual that is genuinely and authentically connected. Again, I pray this morning that grace will come afresh upon each one of our lives to be genuinely and authentically connected. If you believe it, say a louder amen. I said, if you believe it, say a louder amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 10, the Bible tells us there, it says, and when they came hither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met them. And as soon as they met this company of prophets, this is talking about Saul the king, he said, the spirit of God came upon him and he began to prophesy. He began to reflect the source. The connectivity began to have specific and dynamic reflection. I pray that for each one of us from this month forward, we shall begin to have genuine and authentic reflection. If you believe it, say loud, amen. I remember the testimony of one of the sons of God's servant here who was here in Bible school at a point in time. And according to his testimony, being so connected to God's servant that the grace that was at work here, he said in his house where he was staying at that time in 1004, a man went mad, just lost his mind on the spot. And this man's madness was so intense, he was about to throw somebody from the top of 1004. Everybody was afraid, including a man who was a bodybuilder with big muscles. Everybody went to lock themselves inside their room. The madness was intense. And the man looked at him and he said, you, it's only you I will listen to in this house. You, David Oedeko, keys to divine health. It's only you I will listen to in this house. You see, he was so connected that his connection had reflection. When we are genuinely connected, the source to which we are connected will also be reflected. That's the reality. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, it said, we are with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. He said, we are changed into the same image. When you are connected, you become a reflection of that which you are connected to. Again, I pray that for each one of us, the grace for genuine and authentic connection will be made available to us in the name of Jesus. Number two is prophetic covering. Prophetic covering. Prophetic covering. In 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 18 to 24, we have there the episode where David fled and escaped and came to Samuel. And the Bible tells us how people were sent from Saul to go and hunt David. But when they came to meet David, David was under prophetic covering. And as, he got, as they got there, instead of them capturing David, the Bible says the Spirit of God will come upon all of them and begin to prophesy. Saul sent the next batch. Same thing happened. Saul came himself. Same thing happened. Because he was under prophetic covering. I remember the testimony of one of us, a brother Michael Emefi, who said that he got married. And after getting married, while waiting for children, suddenly, affliction came, and his wife passed away. He said, and in the midst of all of this, he began to, you know, ponder and wonder. And he heard in his spirit, you need to go to a place where the glory cloud is thick, and the enemy cannot penetrate. And he said, in wondering, Lord, where is that place? He said, the Lord told him, go to Canaan land. And he came here connected himself to the church, began to engage with instructions, and God restored him within the shortest time, got married, was a journalist, got a job as a bank executive, just like that. Every department of life got dramatically turned around because he came under a covering, under a covering, where certain things were not permitted to occur. 
Shout hallelujah. That is the power of prophetic covering. The power of prophetic covering. We have seen over the years how you will find many times assailants going into places. But they see the banner of WSF and they skip that place. Don't enter that one. You have, we have seen many times where vehicles carry the sticker. A vehicle carried the sticker and then robbers came and snatched the vehicle. And as they went in the vehicle, the, the, the leader of the gang saw the sticker on the car. And they tried to start the vehicle that was working. The, the car could not start. He said, have I not told you before that anywhere you see this sticker, you should leave it alone? Prophetic covering. Prophetic covering. That's what we enjoy in this commission. And that's why we must become conscious of the reality of what is available to us here. When you come here, you have not just come to an assembly. You have come under a covering that whatever is happening to others is not permitted to happen to you. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. In the book of Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, the Bible tells us there, Hosea 12, and verse 13, he said, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. So our preservation is a function, among other things, of prophetic covering. Prophetic covering. That's why we must not play with our covering. Our prophetic covering is one of the vital benefits that we have available to us when we are spiritually connected in this house. And you know, we must have a consciousness of it. It's not just something that we should understand is available, but we must walk in the consciousness of it. That I'm not just living life open under any, open to any attack, no. I'm living life under a prophetic covering. Shout hallelujah. From now, I see that covering speaking in each one of our lives. If you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said, I see that covering speaking in each one of our lives. Amen. Number three is access to the goodness in the house. Access to the goodness in the house. In Psalm chapter 65 and verse 4, the Bible makes us to understand there. He said, blessed is the man that thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Somebody says, what does it mean when he talks about the goodness of the house? He's talking about all the good blessings that are available in the house. And somebody says, how do I know what is available in the house? Every testimony you hear, is a reflection of what is available in that spiritual house. If you go to a shopping center and you are wondering what they are selling in a particular place, if you watch those who are coming out of the place, you can tell what is available inside the place. Whatever they have shopped and carried out of the place is available there. Those are the things they sell there. In the same vein, all the testimonies people are pulling out of here are evidences of the blessings that are available here. Now, in the physical, things can run out of stock. But in the spiritual, there is unlimited stock. There is no blessing that you have ever seen that is available in this place that is not available to all. That's why I said what I say to one, I say to all. The blessings in the hand of God are infinite in nature. They are inexhaustible. The Bible says in Romans 11, 33, Oh, the depth of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways are past finding out the depth of the riches. That means that there is an unlimited dimension of supply of whatever God is making available in any place. So it means if you have heard of healing here, healing is still available here. If you have heard of breakthroughs here, breakthrough is still available here. You have heard testimonies of lifting here. Then lifting is still available here. If you have heard testimonies of restoration here, restoration is still available here. If you have heard testimonies of fruitfulness here, then fruitfulness is still available here. 
That's why you hear people share testimonies about, I heard somebody's testimony and I keyed into it. Why? I know that testimony is here. I know it's available here. So I keyed into that testimony. And as I keyed into that testimony, the testimony was replicated in my life. It's so important for us to recognize that whatever it is that God has as his goodness in any house is available to those who are genuinely connected. That is why the Bible tells us in Psalm 119 and verse 111. Psalm 119 and verse 111. It said, thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. They are the rejoicing of my heart. Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever. They are the rejoicing of my heart. They are the rejoicing of my heart. So it means that every testimony that you have heard here is part of God's goodness that is available here. It's part of God's goodness that is available here. And that is why we must be conscious and we must be testimony sensitive because those testimonies are reflections of packages that are available here. If there is a kind of thing that you desire, you have heard a testimony in somebody else's life, God is telling you that that is available to you also. Because God is no respecter of persons. If he gave it to one, he said to give it to the other. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. And finally, number four is replication of unction. Replication of unction. Psalm chapter 133, verse 1 down to verse 3. The Bible tells us there how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He said, it is like the precious ointment on the head that round down upon the beard, even on Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirts of his garment. When you are connected, you are connected to the oil, the unction, the anointing that flows in this place. And you see, the anointing talks about the empowerment. The empowerment. The empowerment. That is why our genuine connection gives us access to begin to manifest and replicate the same empowerment that is at work upon this church and upon his servant. The same dimension of empowerment. Shout hallelujah. That's what's available to us here. Same dimension of empowerment begins to find expression in us through our genuine connection. That's why we, have, we, must, we must recognize and treasure the connectivity that we have in this place. The privilege of connection should never be taken for granted because it gives you access to the flow of power. We all know that if you are going to see the flow of electric, electric power, there must be a point of connection. Until there is connection, there can be no flow. You can wire your house, but until your wiring is connected to the mains, you will remain without electricity. There must be connection before there can be a flow. So many people are working on their lives, wiring their lives, but there is no connection, so there is no flow. Everything required is in them, but nothing is, they are not connected to anything. So there is no flow of power. And when there is no flow of power, there's no flow of function, a person becomes a victim in the adventure of life. No one here will be a victim again in the name of Jesus. I said no one here will be a victim in the name of Jesus Christ. We saw that again in the example of the apostles in Acts chapter 4 and verse 13, how that these apostles, they took notice of them that they had been with Christ. The very power of Christ was manifested practically through them. The unction of Jesus began to function inside each one of them because of their connectivity. Again, I pray that each one of us will receive the necessary grace to remain connected in the name of Jesus Christ. In your seated position, lift up your right hand before the Lord. Lord, I receive from you this morning the grace for connectivity, the grace to sustain my connectivity. I receive that grace this morning. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. 
pray that prayer from the depth of your heart to remain connected spiritually to this church, to remain connected spiritually to your servant. Lord, I receive that grace this morning. 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 Let that grace be made available to me. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. As you have asked of the Lord, that grace is made manifest in your life. In Jesus' precious name. Give Jesus a big hand of praise, everybody. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Amen. Shall we look up my two hands together and bless the name of the Lord for bringing us to this Leadership Empowerment Summit for the month of July. We do thank him for the light that broke forth in the fourth segment this morning. If you caught anything, thank God for it. If something came true to you, thank God for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. He always reserves the best for the last. That is yet a takeaway pack for you in this segment. May each one be alert enough to connect with their portion. He said, if you see me when I'm caught up, so it takes intense focus to have an encounter with God. Intense focus. Intense focus. May no one suffer broken focus in this section. May you be well connected to what heaven is dropping in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak to us again in the name of Jesus. Thank you forever for all you have been doing in this commission since inception. Thank you for the blessings of rewards that speak in the lives of all of us. And thank you for this season of harvest of rewards that is bound to speak in everyone's life. Thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Speak to us again this morning in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and be seated, please. Amen. I'm welcoming all our leaders worldwide at this time into this awesome season. Just by way of um, preamble, if you must take delivery, of your harvest season of rewards, beware of depression. Beware of depression. Depression opens the door to the devil to rob the individuals of what belongs to them. Beware of depression. Until Anna stood up and ate bread, and the corner was no more sad. Ah, somewhere didn't come. Beware of depression. Prophetic words demand joy and rejoicing for delivery. Beware of depression. It that goeth forth and weepeth. Bearing a precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing the harvest of rewards with them. With rejoicing, you have gone sowing the seed, precious seed of time, of energy, of resources. You have gone through the planting season with the rigor of clearing the field uprooting the trees, arrowing the ground, plowing and region, and then planting. And it's now time for harvest. 
Don't let no devil rob you of your portion. No planter gains access to harvest without rejoicing. He that goeth forth, taking all responsibilities, bearing precious seed and planting, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. With rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with them. Depression is a platform for oppression, defeat, and frustration. You are robbed of his presence with depression. For in his presence there must be fullness of joy. Fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. You can't secure his presence with pressures on your life. So let go and let go. You can't do nothing about the past. The past cannot be written off. Somebody slapped you yesterday, that's okay. He can't unslap you. The slap has landed. Get out of it. Somebody insulted you yesterday, that's all. Even if you say, I'm, I'm sorry, the who had it, I've gone. So you're already insulted in the heart of people. So what is your problem? They publish negative thing about you in newspaper. If it's newspaper, it's only one day, less part. Tomorrow it will not be relevant. Get rid of depression so as to assess your possession. Fight is an enemy. Depression is an enemy. David said, hey man, wait a minute, why that cast out my soul? Why does this character within me? Hope that and go, come on now, get up. Can't be like, come on now, get up. And that's um, 42 verse 5. It's repeated again in verse 10. You fight it, you don't watch it. You fight it, you fight depression. It's not your portion. All the harvest of the field is perished because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Joy chapter 1, verse 12. So we lose the harvest when we lose our joy. Now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the plague of the spirit of depression. On anyone on the sound of my voice today. Amen. The good news is your case can never be hopeless being connected to Jesus. We have begotten to a living hope. Our hope is ordained to stay alive. We have a living hope, First Peter 1, 3. Lazarus was thinking, stinking. He was saying, I tell you that if you believe in the glory of God. They believed and they saw the glory of God. It was a closed case, but it opened by God. Faith reopened it. Faith will reopen any closed case, any day, any time, anywhere. Therefore, cheer up. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say what? Rejoice. Come on, rejoice right now. <laughs> now, what are prophecies? Very important, please. Because this is God's agenda for the end time in Acts chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 here is what the word says and God shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the heavens verse 21 please must receive 
until the times of restitution of all things, fulfillment of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So the last days are great days of fulfillment of prophecies. So we need to be acquainted with what facilitates fulfillment of prophecy. We need to be acquainted with what facilitates fulfillment of prophecies. Let's first define what are prophecies. Before I go there, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. Ecclesiastes 1 9. The thing that has been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. All the word God spoke to Joshua, all came to pass. There is nothing new under the sun, so it has what it takes to bring all to pass. All to pass. All to pass. Like Paul would say of, of Peter, he has sons of the prophet. You have said literal fulfillment of prophecies in, all, in your life and my life over and again. Prophecies are heaven's sworn verdict. By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, that as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purpose, so shall it stand. I swear, prophecies are sworn verdict. And the anchor of the integrity of God that cannot lie. God for whom it is impossible to lie. So we can have a strong consolation. We're on course. We're on course. God won't lie. God can't lie. We're on course. Hebrews 6 and verse 18. Prophecies are sworn verdict. God is saying, I swear to do this if you will do this. So diligently hearken to my voice. Observe what I command you to do. And leave me to the rest. Please know that prophecies are not predictions but definitions of the future. Because God does not predict the future, he defines it. God does not predict the future, he designs it. Isaiah 46, verse 6 to 9. God does not predict the future, he defines it. Isaiah 48 also, verse 8 to 9. God does not only define the future, he directs on how to get there. God said, Lord, the Redeemer, I'm the Lord that leaded the way in the way that thou shouldest go. I'm the one that teaches thee to profit. Isaiah 48, verse 17. God defines and instructs on how to realize the glorious future he has for us in redemption. It, divine, it defines and reveals what it defines and instructs on how to realize the glorious future he has for us a redemption. Unfortunately, 
prophetic words are like words of a song in the ears of many. Ezekiel 32, verse 32 to 33, they are like songs. They have come again. They have come again. They have come again. They are like the words of a song. Man, this guy can sing. This guy is poetic. They don't impart on them. This is one of those things to get people connected to Jesus, get them to become members of the church, so they lose out. May prophetic words not be like the words of a song in your ears again. We were running around with some prophetic words in the 70s, among which was, I will steer jealousy through my people as a mighty man of war. I believed that God was going to steer jealousy through me by his act in my life. I had no calling to ministry. A prophetic word applies to all not limited to ministry or callings. A prophetic scripture applies to all the redeemed whosoever believes. I believe it so bad that Jesus will manifest his life in me to the point of steering jealousy. And I saw him began to steer it. I said as a growing church, we are people I was blocking access to people who were coming to our church to worship. Go back. Go back. Go to your place. Go back. God is not there. <laughs> so the, the prophecy began to fulfill very early when there was nothing to be jealous about. But while they were doing that, people were coming from Makodi to worship in Kaduna. You know it is? From Kano. Good number from Zaria. If you won't let the people in Kaduna come, they will come from anywhere. <laughs> Still jealousy. Let's look at some biblical sources of prophecies. Number one, and the most authentic is through encounters with prophetic scriptures because that is settled in heaven forever. That does not require any further proof. It has been overproven. Encounters, through encounters with prophetic scriptures and the Lord appeared unto Samuel again as Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel and Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So he reveals his agenda to us from prophetic scriptures. From prophetic scriptures which live and abide forever. It lives and abide forever. It lives and abide forever. Being born again, not by corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. That what he said in Second Peter 1, 19. And we do well as we take heed unto it as a light that shines in darkness until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. No promise of scripture or any private interpretation. Holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So they were not said the Holy Ghost. And they make stars of men. Prophetic scriptures are not said the Holy Ghost and they make stars of men. Prophetic scriptures. Prophetic scriptures. Ah, um, a privileged beneficiary 
of raw fulfillment of prophetic scriptures. They are the most authentic. Don't need any other any further proof. Proof. They are well proven. They were tried in fire seven times. Psalm twelve and verse six. So shall my word be, it shall not turn to me void. But shall accomplish that which I purpose. I'm talking that which I sent. So, so his word is settled in heaven forever. Psalm 119 and verse 89. How we miss out of that today. Now, we start casting blame on prophets who said something that didn't come to pass. What the Holy Ghost said, how much has come to pass in your life? He said this. Has put across to him by God the truth. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Instead of looking for who to blame, question yourself. But they come to pass only in level those who receive and believe them. So they can manifest the fulfillment of those prophecies. You receive and believe. He came to his own, his own didn't receive him, but as many as received him, he gave power to manifest as sons of God. You manifest the prophetic word of scriptures that you genuinely receive and believe. You manifest it. God spoke out to me from Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the Almighty thunders from scriptures, and observe to do all these commandments that I commanded thee, that I will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. <laughs> then he came out and with Rema spoke out loud. Uh, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. I said, yes, I know that I'm interested. Then what do I tell you to do? Do it. From scriptures. I saw me on top of the world. That was April 1984. I was below sea level in ministry, but I was in heavenly places in Christ. I saw me on top of the world. Church was less than 40. I saw me on top of the world. Physically, I was below sea level, but by redemption, seated in heavenly places far above. Prophetic scriptures are very powerful. They are, most, they are the most powerful kind of other prophets you can come across. Please come awake. Come awake. Come awake. Come awake. Back in 1970, I saw that I've been redeemed as a priest and a king to reign on the earth. So I received it. I was 16 years old. I believed it. And it began to manifest in my mentality. Will the king go out like this? No, they will go and change. I was a king. Though a sufficient, no identity. I saw my enthronement when I was not a legal candidate for enthronement. Prophetic scriptures are powerful. They I saw that the path of the justifiers ordained as a shining light to shine more and more and more 
and more. And I declared, thank you, Jesus. I'm not prepared for a better yesterday in my journey. 1981, Proverbs 4, verse 18. I saw from the world those who do wicked against the covenant, it will corrupt them with flatteries. But those who do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. Then he said, My son, you need to know anyone to scale the utmost height. Just know me, know my covenant. 1981. I lost any mentality for human connection. My connectivity to Jesus has come to decorate my life and destiny forever. He speaks to us by his word. His words are not suggestions. They are prophetic. They point to our way defined future. If you are interested. I was in the world, stood in the world, in the prayer and fasting session. And then, this Romans 15, 6, 6 hit me. For the Lord thy God bless you as he has said. And that shall lead to many nations. But, but, that but came a boo. That shall not borrow. I said, why? He said, a borrower is servant to the lender. I said, why not? He said, you can't not serve two masters. You have to choose one and despise the other. I said, Jesus, I choose you. I despise the lender. And I make a covenant against borrowing till I go to heaven. October 4, 1981. I got liberated before I got involved, before I got entangled. I got liberated before I got entangled. Before I would get entangled, I got liberated. This church is not owing any dime anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. This church has no financial hidden agenda. I'm not in anyone living or dead. That's how authentic and powerful prophetic scriptures can be. And then you saw the thing that is driving me forever. Matthew 6.33. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then Rema came, and all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. I didn't copy that from anywhere. I was sharing something one of my sons in the ministry yesterday. He says, Sir, you have been saying this thing for years, and it's still the same. I said, You don't edit prophecy. You don't edit prophecy. <laughs> you don't edit prophecy. I don't believe that prophecy. What of this one? Do you believe it? <laughs> it when God comes and opens his mouth and says, I'm Jehovah God, this is what I'm saying. I didn't say it to anybody. You don't believe it's going to happen. You'll be glad to know this. That's 1996. When I was called to minister, I said, Jesus, who pays me? And within two weeks, the answer landed. After this, thing, he appointed 70 others also. Me, it's in the mail. He said, you are in my employment. I am responsible. Just stay on duty. Verse 7, the laborer is worthy of his hire. Hold on. That's where I draw my paycheck tomorrow. Stay on duty, I'm responsible. Stay on duty, I'm responsible. We don't have military uniform that has bibs. Maybe I'm not a sergeant. Amen. Stay, stay on duty, I'm responsible. He has never failed once because we have never looked for what to eat once. We have never borrowed sugar or tea once. I'm responsible. For the scriptures,
our set agendas, agenda for God's people. When I cried, I cannot be poor, it was the eruption of a prophetic war. My son, my prophetic plan is not a promise. It doesn't answer to prayers. Rema from Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18. It's not a promise. It has no respect for prayer and fasting. My prophetic plan is a covenant. Until your part is played, I'm not committed. Ah, my part. Put it here. By grace, I've been playing my part ever since. And my part has not stopped speaking. Prophetic speakers, scriptures are powerful. Number two, through divine encounters with God as an individual, as in the case of Abraham, that's God coming across to you as a person to unveil his plan and purpose to you like he did to Abraham. That's what I had in the delivery of the liberation mandate. Seek a quiet place, I want to talk to you. Encounter. That's what I had on the same prophetic pillars of the commission, October 81. All came to pass and are still coming to pass in increasing dimensions. Arise, get down to Lagos. That's personal encounter. And now he came down here with us. And we can see what he's doing. I was going on the pulpit April 20, 1987, and I heard him say, it's time to spread out. And I announced it. I don't have a problem with that. Because I had it. And so we planted in May Five, our first church planted in Devo, five churches at a time. The harvest of Africa is now overripe, that special encounter. It's not in Genesis, it's not in the Revelation. I've not seen Africa in the Bible yet. Maybe it's there. The tabernacle shall be dedicated within one year. September 18th, date exact. It still gives personal encounters with people. Number three, I'm taking them in order of their priority. Prophetic scriptures number one, capital one. Capital number one. This one I'm saying now, you need to prove it. There are two voices in the atmosphere, the voice of the shepherd and the voice of the stranger. And the voice of the stranger, most of the time, we call itself as the voice of the shepherd to get his victim into traps. But through scripture, we know when is the voice of the shepherd to be accompanied with peace, accompanied with joy, a company with insight on how to be about it. And then we have through prophets sent our way. There are prophets sent our way. God hasn't changed. There were many widows in Israel unto no was Elijah sent, but unto Zarephath, a woman that was a widow. Luke 4, 26. There were many, many lepers in Israel. Unto none was Elisha sent, but unto Naaman the Syrian. So there are prophets sent away. They are helpers of our destiny. And there were the prophets with them helping them. Helping them. 
fulfill their glorious destiny. Ezra chapter 5, and verse 1 and 2. There were prophets of God with them, helping them. There are prophets sent our way, and they are there as helpers of our destiny in our work with God. I got a major help from Agen's ministry, fresh oil, Lord, fresh oil, and keep him ever fresh. I've never known a burnout. Fresh oil, Lord, fresh oil, and keep him ever fresh. 1987. Fresh oil, Lord, fresh oil, and keep him ever fresh. Nineteen eighty three. Baba Deboye said in his message, This ministry will succeed whether you support it or not. <laughs> Can you imagine? In the commissioning service, you don't need any support. He connected with the things God has been speaking to me without us discussing. Archbishop Benson Dawson said, these hands will never know dryness. He also said from today, I impart to you the gift of some time before the needs arise, the supply will be waiting. 1990. They are helpers of our destiny. Prophets don't need your offering, you need your help. I was prompted to sow a seed to him as instructed by the Lord and I placed it in his hand. He said, bring out your hand. I did. And he put it back there. He didn't check what it was. He didn't check the amount. That's when he proclaimed the blessing. From today, these hands will never know dryness. I've never gone hunting for dollars in my life. This hand will never know blindness. We have currency that we don't know where they came from. This hand will never know blindness. Prophets don't need your offering. You need their help. Come on now. You need And then all kinds of prophetic words from Kenneth Copeland, such as from today, my breastplate is your breastplate and my sword is your sword. You heard that before? They are helpers of our destiny. They are not offering collectors. I was in one of my sons in the ministry meeting yesterday. I didn't see, I didn't check one thing that anybody gave me. No. Prophets are not... Uh, I took my offering before I went home. Before I went there. And as I was entering, they were taking the offering. I said, yes, I got it. They are no grabbers. Elijah said, I will not take nothing from you, my friend. We don't say miracles. You can go. Today, it's offering that defines ministry to many. I mean, I was blessed in that church. I said, what happened? A lot of offering. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Conclusion. Don't ever attempt to view prophecies in your own strength. For it is beyond you. Whatever God speaks with his mouth, only his hand has capacity to deliver it. First Kings 8, verse 15 and 24.
For without me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. By strength shall no man prevail. Now imagine, what kind of navy can part the Red Sea? Amen. A strong navy of a strong nation. That your task is part of the Red Sea. But this moment will pass. Don't ever attempt to fulfill prophecy. Know what to do to see prophecies fulfilled. Don't ever attempt to fulfill prophecies. Just keep doing what it tells you to do because only his hand can bring his word to pass in our lives. Yours and mine is to believe and be committed to obeying his word and leave performance of his word to him. Abraham's faith was justified by his work. Faith without work is dead. Keep doing what he tells you to do. Leave the fulfillment of his word to him. It was not recorded that Abraham prayed to see prophecy fulfilled once. He just continued to obey God and that con consistently, consistently, and all came to pass. All came to pass. Our God is the covenant keeping God. We are called just to do our part and by so doing we have committed him to confirm his word. Get to do your part. Ours is to stay focused on him and his word and we have committed him to bring his word to pass in our lives. You want to enter into fortune? Seek ye first my kingdom. Hmm. Which results? And I begin to add to you, all these others are dying to get. Knowing that God does not reward effort made, he rewards results obtained. So activity without result always equals futility. Results. Results. I gave you one, you made 10 out of it. Have the authority over 10 cities. I gave you one. You made five out of it. Have the authority over five cities. And the most of you is my honor. If the honor is my honor. You want my honor? Be part of pulling in the multitude to him. To him. To him. You take pleasure in my kingdom. I will pour on you fearful blessings. I will make the kings of the earth to fear. Psalm 102 and verse 13 to 15. We have seen prophecies fulfilled in torrents in this ministry. There was none we prayed for to come. The same prophetic pillars, among others, said, the destiny of this age has been committed to our hand. That's too heavy for small, small boys. No, it's a big God that spoke it. I'll never speak that under any spell. It's the voice of the great God. By his grace. This ministry has made its mark on this generation that is bound to continue to next generations and next after next and forever. It was spoken when there was nothing that looked like it. The earth was formed without void and God said, let there be light and light came. Never mind where you are. What God speaks is as sure as the day if you will receive it and believe it. 
This means we will not have to debate over doctrines, so we don't debate. But to prove the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you see his power erupting here every now and then? Erupting every now and then. By his hand. By his hand. This church will not be limited to this country alone, but to foreign nations of the world. We have vibrant churches shall be planted. Ah, we have not planted one yet. These were 82 prophetic releases. April 10th. And then I saw wings flying. And I said, what are these, my Lord? He said, these are aircrafts with you inside. We are in the gospel to the hidden nations. There was one about to die with B2 in that meeting. B2 that stays alive by human help. Amen. And God is talking about flying and aircrafts. The secretary wrote aircraft. I said, no, put S. He said aircraft. Because the one you wrote, your daughter can buy it. So what's your problem? <laughs> so, he has not only fulfilled that word, he has also brought in an anger that he didn't say. Talk about an anger. <laughs> and the anger was built as a seed. We didn't have to pay. Built as a seed. He brought in the first mission aircraft as a dream. You told me it's Saturday morning, it's time to get the aircraft. And I told them because I'm that stupid. So I told them. God said to me while I was coming to, to this meeting, it's time to get the aircraft. Now let's give. What are you going to give? What's the amount? Don't know. And yet the plane arrived six months after. Don't mock prophecies. Don't. If you encounter is genuine, God is committed. If the encounter is real, it's not fabricated, God is committed. Now, you'll be speaking from one place, shall be seen on the screen at the same time across the nations of the world. How? NTA? No. Those who have spoken in the days of black and white TV. Did you come to pass or not? Now, we are seated here today. Minimum one for the six nations are connected. So we are sons and daughters of the prophet, so we know prophecies are real. And prophecies are still being fulfilled today without any games. May every prophetic word that has ever come your way begin to find auto fulfillment. Amen as you keep going after God and the interest of his kingdom. Like Abraham, our father. Like Abraham, our father. Like Abraham, our father. The good news here today is that a new day dawns in your own life. Can I hear your loudest amen? Can I hear your loudest amen? Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. I'll close with this last bit of thought. Understanding the blessedness of spiritual connectivity. It looks a bit like the first word we had. But this one is connecting to the anointing to which God has sent you or brought your way. Spiritual connectivity to God's anointed vessels that God may send one's way is superior to our commitment to them and their ministry. Commitment is inferior to connectivity. 
no matter how committed a branch is to a tree, it cannot bear fruit after that tree. It has to be grafted in for that to happen. Men can see commitment, but no one can see connectivity. One can be running around with every activity that goes on, but no one can see connectivity. I, the Lord, I sat the heart and I tried the reins. As in water face answers to face, so the heart of man answers to another. Spiritual connectivity is vital to assessing the grace the unction of an anointed man or woman. So why connectivity of the heart? Why connectivity of the heart? Commitment is defined by the act. The things we do before they call you have answer. Where they are going, you have already gone. But genuine connectivity never lacks proofs. Because it enables the connected to partake of the root and the fatness of the olive. Genuine connectivity never lack proofs. Romans eleven seventeen. Genuine connectivity never lack proofs. Genuine connectivity never lack proofs. We can only tell the source of anyone by the fruity beers. Matthew 7, 16 and 20. In the same vein, why dedication is of deeds, connectivity remains absolutely an issue of the heart. As the Lord live it, and as I so live it, I shall not leave you. He said, get back here never. Okay. I'm connected to your soul. Now ask what you want. I want to disappoint upon you. He said, you have asked it. Hard thing. By your connectivity, you are entitled to one. But by your demand, have to. If you see me when I'm caught on. He didn't only see him. He grabbed his man to, whoa, we are going together. <laughs> God once said something to me. He said, my son, someone as close to you as your cloth. It's about coming over. You know what Elisha said? I know it. Hold your peace. I know it. Hold your peace. And I said, my biological father, I said, no. Again. I told my wife, we need to move now. The girl is about to soar. That's how it was. No engagement. We need to move now. The eagle is about to soar. So we fled to America. <laughs> Two, three weeks after Again went home smiling. Again went home smiling. As close to you as your cloth, connectivity. As close to you as your cloth. I don't mimic again. I just flow in the auction that he walked through. There's a river of life flowing here. Please get connected. Get connected. One cannot be a partaker of the grace 
to which is only committed, but to the one to which is genuinely connected. One cannot be a partaker of the grace to which is only committed, but the one to which is genuinely connected. They were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All of them. Or when of them God was not pleased, they were overthrown in the wilderness. They joined the chariot, but they were not connected. First Corinthians 10, 1 to 5. My humble testimonies have remained connected to the grace of God upon Kennedy again. And that has continued for the past 48 years. It's gone to heaven. My connectivity remains. If you don't know the house passes on, and disconnect the, word, the pipe from the mains, water will still flow. The owner has gone, but the tank is still there. Stay connected. Stay connected. I heard the voice of God for the first time through T.L. Osborne's ministry. That was for 48 years. I'm still hearing tomorrow because my heart is celebrating the hand of this great man upon my life. I encountered Copeland's ministry 47 years ago. Took a new turn. 1982, we may encounter with the prophetic word on prosperity. That was it 42 years ago. Encounter creative dimension of ministry from his ministry. 1990. That's quite some time. Stay connected. I mentioned my connectivity with Archbishop Benson in the house. He went to heaven some 26 years ago, or 25 years ago. I'm still connected. When you hear a roar, that's Benson in the house. When you see unshakable boldness, that's Benson for you. I was at the airport one time while he was still alive, and they were running around. Happy Shop Benson, that's right. We are not the same height. No. I was up in the place. They said, Open the door, open the door. Pastor, the way is around. <laughs> and they know me very well in the place. That is this thing that happens when connectivity is genuine. Can I tell you where the problem is? Because prophets are a sign to be spoken against. People miss out of the virtues that they carry by subscribing to the erroneous news that emanate from the devil to disconnect you from what they carry for you. That won't stop. But one can be, one can escape being a victim. Luke chapter 2 and verse 34. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall the rising again of men in Israel, and for a sign that shall be spoken against. And Moses said, The prophet has you know, sent unto you like unto me, him shall ye hear, in order that he will say to you. So is that prophet, and shall be a sign to be spoken against. How much less? Small, small prophets, like some of us. A sign to be spoken against. They did it while he was here. They are doing it now that he's gone to heaven. And blessing mankind. They say it's a lie. It's not Messiah. 
That doesn't stop you. When you are sure of the prophet to whom God has said, to whom you are sent, or God says to you, connect and face where you are going. My spiritual lineage has a global DNA in it. And so, I don't manifest a local ministry. Because I'm born from a global DNA spiritual family. The ones who have gone to heaven, their work is still speaking. I belong to a family where you still speak even when you are gone. You have gone around this anointing and all. It's time to connect. So you can keep reproducing after the same order. It's time to connect. One of those great men was reading my books and he said, I saw you operating in the realm of Egan. He has never heard me share his story. My story with him. He's at the point, you just step off. The man Copeland said, don't tell me you learned this thing from me. You have gotten much more from me than I do. There are statements of humility. You have what it takes to get much more from these things than I do. You have what it takes if you will give yourself a new spiritual orientation. Prophets are sent as helpers. They don't need my help. <coughs> I need theirs. The work of the house of the Lord ceased by power and by force. The prophetic word came and they began. And there were the prophets with them helping to ward off anything that wants to stand on their way. Genuine prophets are helpers. The new prophets don't look for who to help them. They are hunting for who needs to help. They are hunting for who else to help. Somebody said from another town that he's sitting a property to me. I told my sister, I said, call them to find out. Is he worth that seed? I don't know him. Is he a committed member of the church? Let's see, Papa collected my two plots of land for me. Somebody sent me a special model of uh, a Range Rover, brand new. They say, Who are you? He said, I'm the one God knows. I said, We don't take things from anyone God knows. We want to know him. <laughs> I said, Return the car, please. I said, now find out who knows you in this church. So you mentioned, they called the person, oh, I know him. Is he worth sowing that kind of seed? Nobody's looking for to grab. Don't get caught in the web. Misreading the lifestyle of a prophet so as to miss what he carries for you. They are for the falling and the rising again of many in Israel. And a sign that shall be spoken against. I was in the minister's meeting and I was telling them, we had two meetings in this hall asking for those that God might be speaking to to move to the next phase of their ministry with our pastors. Hello? That I don't want somebody to leave me forever. How? 
Twice. I was trying to pay the date. I couldn't pay the date. Than this morning. With a clear prophetic address. Should God be speaking to you to put you in the of your ministry? We are here to bless you and you'll be bearing fruit after your roots. That's my prayer for them anytime they leave. You are going to be bearing fruit after your roots. But that's if you are connected. If you are not, it's an empty prayer. We gathered 68 of our pastors in this uh, zona system who had callings to ministry. I invited them and their family and we had a meeting there in uh, Wobby where I blessed them and sent them forth to go and produce fruits after that and told them, should there be any issue, you have a home. Get back here. Let's know what it is. There is a sign that shall be spoken now. When I see you go into trouble and you look like somebody that can be helped, hey, can you check it again? I can't check for you. Share for yourself. If I check for you and uh, I say, don't go. You say, well, you're having a problem. I say, go. Sir. Can you say, he told me to go. No, so check it properly. Life. As I'm standing before you, none of my drawers in the office is locked. There's nothing that I'm going to hide. When I need something, I say, well, look, check drawer number three, check this material, send it to me. If I carry the key and go to America, how can you check? Amen. Life. You may never come across a perfect prophet or apostle, but the gift they carry is perfect. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of Light, in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. It is the gift you are tapping into. Stop being a judge. A woman here in Oyo came down desperate, got himself herself into trouble. The husband left her with a three month old child. He said, God, what is it? He said, What to say against my servant? And you know, I don't normally hear such things, but he said it by himself. He said, I said that. Papa cannot eat without her tight. I've been paying time before she was born. <laughs> Amen. Sir, so, can I tell you the truth? I'm feeding on my covenant practice, not on your gift. I'm feeding on my covenant practice as revealed to me by God. Over to you. What am I saying? There's a strong apostolic prophetic virtue in this commission. You better tap into it. It's for your help. Tap into it. It's for your help. Don't let your mouth cause your flesh to say. Let us say that before they just was an error. Why should God be angry with you and destroy the works of your heart? Life and death are in the power of the tongue. I'm here for 38 years. Again, it's gone. Um, some 21 years. I've not had one thing against him. Is he always, always right? I don't know, but I've not found what is wrong. You can't tap into any auction whose career you question their integrity. You can't. You can't. What am I saying? My greatest joy, sir, is to see every single winner worldwide carry all the virtues and the graces upon this commission as individuals. I'm going to manifest it in their own lives. And that shall be. With the light you have gotten today, I'm sure you are set free. Your genuine membership of the church matters a lot. 
to how much impact the grace on this church can have on your life. Spiritual church is not a club. Spiritual membership. No passerby. No visitors. Now let's go see what's happening there. I don't think I believe them, but let's go. You see, I told you. See how they have been singing this morning. They're always singing, singing, singing. Is that what you came for? Now we're done. Lives are being changed. And you're only still in cycles. What's the matter? It's time to examine ourselves and connect. For every single worker here, may you recognize that you are serving Christ. You are not serving the church. The church can't reward you. It's right there, can't. Carry the mentality of I'm serving Christ on your ways. It will affect the quality of your engagement and the steadfastness of your involvement. Be blessed. Stand to your feet. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Can I ask each of us to lift our hands worldwide this time and seek for grace for the required orientations that will help you maximize the blessedness of where you belong. Ask God for grace for the required orientations that will connect with the virtues and the manifold grace of God available in this commission. Ask for grace to assess the potency of scriptural prophecies as they keep adding value to your life over and again. You don't have to explain again that when winner. They must see it in your life. They must see it in your life. The winning grace must keep manifesting in your life. The winning grace must keep manifesting in my life. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Help me to take responsibility to see prophecy fulfilled in my life and not banging my head on it, but simply doing what you command. So to see prophecy fulfilled in my life. Pray that prayer, everybody. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Yes. To all our resident pastors around the world, now watch. I've never been in charge of this church money since inception. And God is my witness. Not even in fellowship days. The money of this ministry has never slept in my house except by a prophetic instruction one night when my son, Bishop Abiyo and myself, he came around and I said, let's go to the office. I told the administrator, bring out all the money that we have here. Are you sure everything is over? Put in my boot and we drove home. Two hours after that, I'm Robert and the place. It was a signal of the Holy Ghost to someone he can trust. So what is a man of God doing with the accounting, accounting? What is what are you doing there? I'm not a signal today to any ministry account. University? Uh, what is it? Uni church? <laughs> I have 
my own God gave me blessing. And it's mammoth. So if you are not committed to covenant integrity, you have problems. You have problems. Nothing secret here. Money Man meeting holds every week. Every week. Have I been there? Doing what? I've managed enough. I've left that. Allow the set order to work. These orderly people don't make much out of life. They can't see something went wrong now in church account and they're asking for me. No. They know who to ask for. They should go after them. Amen. Abba. Abba. You are signing a paper, you are doing your hand like this. As you are putting your hand, that they are reading to. <laughs> to make returns on any expenditure particularly in prayer and other things that may be given to any officials in the church, to be calling you to make returns, you have a questionable character. When church was sponsored in my trips, before we arrive home, the account is ready. Account of including toll gate fee. I will wait and collect receipt because they may not, I, mean, I can't be explaining that we went to the collected receipt. I will wait and collect change. Oh. No. Church money for you, how? Are you a priest? <laughs> no. They say, please carry your car. I'm not carrying my car. Give me my change. I will attach the receipt to returns. We buy for it. I get, wait and collect receipt. Kilo day. By teaching about an example, God has helped me to communicate what it means to maintain financial integrity. May each one of us succeed to maintain that at our various levels. Amen. That applies to us as the body members. Every law of scriptures applies to all. It includes seven ministers, in case you have some things passed to you on behalf of the church. It includes everybody. Includes everybody. Listen, the church paid for my transportation last 1988. 1988 was the last time the church paid that for my ticket, for my foil. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I earned my last pay in this ministry 1987, December. I've lived by faith till date without any announcement. First came out of my mouth in 1996 when I already had my own accountant to help count my money so I won't miss my tithe. A great day awaits you, yes. including your business. Don't collect money and the accountant say, uh, for what? No, you ask me again, you are gone. <laughs> it's helping to protect your business. You carry money to go and do burial. Right? Then you come and say, I don't know what happened. You happen. <laughs> planning, planning with a sense of integrity matters a lot. Now receive grace. Because financial fortune is part of the virtues upon this commission. No one suffers financial misfortune again. But he that is not full in his business is a brother to him that's a waster. When you're a waster, you end up a beggar. The brother son wasted his substance and he began to beg. In the name of Jesus, that wasteful spirit that may have heard anybody burn, you escape today. Yeah. The moment you start doing 
what is beyond you, you are heading for trouble. We couldn't rent a house of 45,000 per annum in Nikeja when we came here. I asked them, see for sale? They must have my village. That I paid that much of money to rent a house. That's the level. Don't play. Set two for your level part time. They call it contentment. 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 You are renting a house that is more than your income. What a life. What a life. We were once in a store that had no cross ventilation. We moved to the outside because we haven't got the money to put a shed on it. Then we put a shed that is grass. Then God blessed us so much we had iron, iron, was it, iron sheets on top of it. Floor not paved. When it rained, water will be flowing from the altar of God. Like uh, Ezekiel 47. And then water was good. They measured the water. They moved forward. Come on, relax. And from there now, to sanctuaries around the world. God is changing your level. God is changing your level. If nobody sees you, God does. If no one sees you, if no audit sees you, God does. If no external or internal audit or surrounding audit didn't see you, God sees you. No one will suffer a covenant accident. Yeah. Lift up your two hands. The month is declared one more time your season of harvest of rewards. Yeah. As the Lord lives, every of your precious seed soul of time, of energy, of resources, in pursuing after souls, in the show that they are, they, are, they are establishing the faith, be openly rewarded. Yeah. You are going to hit waves of favor. Yeah. And it's starting from now. Yeah. You are hitting waves of favor. Yeah. And it's starting from now. Yeah. You are hitting waves of favor. Yeah. And it's starting from now. Yeah. You are hitting waves of favor. Yeah. And it's starting from now. Yeah. You are hitting waves of favor. Yeah. And it's starting from now. In the name of Jesus. Please know, commitment has to be sustained. Past commitment holds no value in the sight of God. Let's sustain our commitment towards ensuring the establishment of all the souls that Christ brought away in the course of this operation. In this, our great month of harvest of rewards. That young man went to look after his convert, who is old enough to be his mother, and ran into favor the same day. Became a car owner and a house owner the same day. He didn't stop at the operation. He went after the operation to ensure that this convert is established. Somebody looking at him from afar off in the same hospital said, is he your mother? Because he's old enough to be his mother. He said, no, it's my convert. Why are you taking care of who is my responsibility? It's my responsibility. As soon as he left, he called him. Go to so please. He got to say, this guy is for you. Ah. Then there's a house there in Abuja. Consider it your own. By sustainable commitment, please stay committed. Your full package will drop as you don't draw back from following him in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow, every chain shall be broken. <laughs> The net shall be broken. Yeah. We shall all escape. Yeah. Every area you sense bondage, name it and God will nail it. Yeah. Tomorrow is a service of escape. Yeah. We have gone after other people's rescue. And whatever man so that shall live, it's our turn to live the testimony of escape. Yeah. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Keep singing, not through the man. Keep singing. Your harvest of rewards demanded. Keep, sing, O oh barren. Your fruitfulness is here.
Sing, O down trodden, your breakthrough is here. Sing, O all oppressed, your freedom is here. Sing, 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 sing. What is it? Thank you, Jesus. Can we sing five minutes and then we close? Are you excited? Are you excited? Please look it, look it. Are you excited? Come on now, let's praise him five minutes. All around the world at this time, join us in this praise. Five minutes short. Glory. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad. And I lift up my voice to sing praise to the Lord. I know this is the day we have been. Somebody rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice and be glad. In Your change has come. I will rejoice and be glad. And I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice to sing praise to the Lord. Oh, this is the day. This is the day he has been. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. Somebody rejoice. Rejoice, we rejoice, 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 rejoice. Lift up my voice to sing praise to the Lord. Oh, this is the day. This is the day. Yes. I will rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice and be glad. Somebody rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice, rejoice and be glad. And I lift up my voice up to sing praise. praise to the Lord. Oh, this is the day. This is the day. Yes. I will rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice and be glad. Lord. I will rejoice and be glad. Oh. I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice to see praise to the Lord. Oh, this is the day. This is the day. Yes, I say, Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, I praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, I praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. I exalt your name. I exalt your name. I, I exalt your name. Your let your name be praised. Let your name be praised. I say, let your name be praised. Let your name be praised. I say, oh Lord, oh, what a wonderful God you are. Oh Lord, what a wonderful God you are. I celebrate your goodness. I celebrate your kindness, Lord. Oh Lord, what a wonderful God you are. You are so good, so good to me. God, we give you praise. Oh Lord, you're the wonderful God. You, hey, are. you are the rewarding God. They are giving you all the praise. Oh Lord, you're the wonderful God. You I said, Oh Lord, I want a wonderful God. You are. Oh Lord, you're the wonderful God. You I said,
joy, joy, joy. Oh, in my life. Say, I am joy, 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 joy. Be blessed. Yeah. The month is declared your month. Yeah. Your serving the bank will not be in vain. Yeah. You never lack testimonies to share. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. May the light received today keep adding value to our lives. Yeah. May the corrections we require be put quickly in place. Yeah. And may each one of us fulfill God's agenda in our life. In grand styles. I proclaim blessings upon all our assemblies in the world. All the harvest of this thing shall abide in the name of Jesus. I release fresh grace upon all our ministers. Be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.